Thanks, Bakari. And thank you and your colleagues at ACT for all you do for higher education in America. And thanks all of you in this room for all you do for American opportunity. You've had a great program this week, and I'm pleased that a number of my CUNY Community College presidents could be here with you. They're seated right here. They're going to see the applause sign. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's not about yet. Uh, I was pleased to have such a nice place uh, last evening to watch a major cultural event. The uh, Mets winning a division series over that team. <laughs> that team a little bit to the north of here. Now, you know, you've got to humor me because I've had a bit of a grudge against that team since 1957 when they left Brooklyn. Uh, so justice was served uh, last night. Also couldn't pass up the chance to talk to this group of leaders in higher education. You have an extraordinarily important role in what I think is one of the key debates about the future of our country. It may not be as entertaining as some of the presidential debates, but I can assure you it's every bit as relevant to our future. Community colleges are uniquely American institutions, and I believe they hold the key to solving many of the most vexing challenges to national and regional competitiveness and individual opportunity. Unfortunately, by some measures, we're heading in the wrong direction. When I was just out of college, and judging from the gray hair in this room, when many of you were too, we were number one. That is, the U.S. was first in the world in educational attainment. But as you know, that's now a distant memory. Now, among OECD countries, the club of the world's wealthiest nations and our biggest competitors, we're number 14 in attainment rates. Making matters worse, those countries are expanding their graduation rates more rapidly than we are, and we're falling farther behind. This should unsettle most Americans. I'm sure it unsettles most of you. It also certainly unsettled President Obama, who announced that we will be first again in the world by 2020. That's going to be a challenging goal, but it's absolutely worth striving for. Other countries recognize the value of what the United States did in the post-war years, investing heavily in a new generation of college goers, allowing vastly increased numbers of college graduates to contribute to an unprecedented economic growth. Our friends and competitors have come to appreciate the wisdom of that strategy, and they've been rapidly increasing the percentage of their citizens with college degrees. But in addition to national destinies, higher education, as you know, changes individual lives profoundly. You know the numbers well. A college graduate enjoys roughly double the lifetime earnings of a high school graduate. Almost 80% of all new jobs will require education beyond high school. Recent unemployment rate for those with a high school degree is over 5% well above that of associate degree holders, and more than double that of four-year degree holders. And of course, we know that so many other social indicators improve with higher education attainment. Better health, higher levels of community involvement, less dependence on public assistance, and less involvement with the criminal justice system. So for decades, we have pushed college access, which is tremendously important. In a country where we deeply believe in equality of opportunity, ensuring that the doors to institutions that build better careers and communities are open is in our national DNA. The President's Free Community College Initiative doubles down on access, and it's timely because of deep concerns over rising tuition and record levels of debt. At a time when many students are taking on crippling debt, community college leaders need to be loud and clear about the quality and value of what we provide. But it's fair to ask whether reducing the cost of attendance alone is the right goal, or even the most important one. At the City University of New York, nearly 70% of our full-time community college students pay no tuition because of federal, state, and city aid. And over 80% of those who graduate do so with zero federal debt. So while we can and we should improve access, particularly to underrepresented low-income populations, by itself, that's not enough, and it will not solve the biggest problem we face at community colleges. 
The key challenge today is significantly improving retention and graduation rates. It isn't easy, the stakes are huge, and the battle is central to our mission. And it's a battle most important to those students who face the greatest obstacles. While students from the highest income quartile graduate from college at a 77% rate, only 9% of those in the lowest quartile reach that goal. And a substantial divide also exists among different racial and ethnic groups. This is unacceptable. It's precisely from those underrepresented groups that community college draws so many of our students. So if there's a problem generally in this country in educational attainment, there's a crisis at community colleges. Our nation's three-year urban community college graduation rate is 15%. In other words, 85% of the students in those colleges are failing to graduate in 150% of the standard time of degree. Those figures are worse, of course, because a portion of those students leave early to go to a baccalaureate institution and get a four-year degree, about 10%. And many of them intended to go part-time and continue and ultimately uh, earn a college degree. So those are both positive, but they should in no way mask the concerns over unsatisfactory overall rates. These are the students who have the most to benefit from a college degree. At CUNY, over half of our 100,000 community college students represent the first generation in their families to attend college. Almost half were born in another country. Half come from households that earn 20000 or less a year, and most are underrepresented minorities. But it's not enough for us to provide only access or just an opportunity for advancement. We must take responsibility for equipping our students with the tools they need to take advantage of that opportunity and be accountable for doing anything less. The ladder to the middle class and career success has been built on educational attainment. Well, CUNY is a comprehensive university system with over 275,000 degree-seeking students from high school completion to PhD, and has long been a magnet for students with modest financial resources but outsized ability and ambition. Our graduates have won 13 Nobel Prizes. Last year alone, 22 of our students won Fulbrights. Earlier this year, there was a report on the undergraduate alma maters of MacArthur geniuses. Only two public universities were in the top 10, Berkeley and CUNY. Generations of immigrants, minorities, low-income Americans found the first rung on that ladder at our community and public colleges. These institutions have been, as CUNY alumnus and immigrant and Intel CEO Andy Grove said, the American dream machine. That machine needs retooling especially if we want all our community colleges to have a shot at the American dream. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the retooling we're doing at CUNY's community colleges, which are showing exceptional results. It's my hope that other schools will either embrace these models and our optimism or develop their own equally successful innovations. So a great majority of our students come from New York City's public schools, which like those and other large urban systems have many challenges. So we begin with the notion that our responsibilities must include programs that knit together our high schools and our colleges so that more students enroll truly ready for the rigors of a quality college experience. Instead of waiting for a qualified student to show up at the doors, like many of you, we help create those qualified students. Our collaborative programs with New York City high schools serve more than 25,000 students a year. Many instances helping them overcome inadequate preparation in math and reading, and others going much farther and helping them earn college credits and degrees along with their high school diplomas. And it costs those students nothing. Like many of you, we've implemented early college high schools, which provide intensive college preparation, counseling, support, and like your experiences have been amazing. One of the schools, the Kingsboro Early College Secondary School, had a 93% high school graduation rate, and 68% of those students received at the same time their associate degree. This is a case which, for me, having spent 25 years at research universities, where seeing was believing. On my second day on the job at CUNY, I attended a graduation ceremony at Oslo's Community College in the Bronx. 
At one point, the president asked the students from the Ostos Lincoln Academy, another of our early college programs, to stand. A large group of students in the middle of the auditorium, all getting their associate's degrees, rose to a hearty applause from their classmates. Two weeks later, those same students walked across another stage and received a high school diploma. Think how that experience changed their lives. A program we pioneered with IBM and the New York City Public Schools called P-TECH takes this a step further. Starting in the ninth grade, it gives students a chance to earn in six years their high school degree, an associate degree, and substantial professional experience, and an increased likelihood of a job at IBM or other tech employers. After President Obama visited P-TECH in Brooklyn, he highlighted the program in the State of the Union Address, which has led to others adopting similar models. But even with these programs, even with the collaborative work we do with the high schools in New York, 80% of our incoming community college students require remediation in one or more subjects. So to address this, the CUNY START program is a sort of a boot camp designed to prepare students in a highly supportive, intensive environment that costs them very little, $75 and importantly, does not cause them to burn through financial aid. And it works. From the fall of 2009 to the fall of 2014, two-thirds of the incoming full-time students had failed all three subject areas on our proficiency tests, reading, writing, and math. And one-third had failed two subjects. By the end of their experience with CUNY START, half had achieved proficiency in all three, and one-third were proficient in two. With a new city investment, this year we're doubling the size of that program. Now, in addition to CUNY Star and other CUNY-wide efforts, our colleges have their own exciting innovations, some showing great success, other great promise. These include pioneering e-portfolios at LaGuardia, thematic academies at Queensboro, a virtual safety net at Kingsboro, including a clever early alert app, and a two-generation initiative at Ostos, where almost one-third of students have children of their own. So like all of you, with these programs and others, we've been trying to address one by one some of the hurdles that are holding our students back. A new CUNY initiative called the Accelerated Study and Associate Programs, or ASAP for short, combines many of these strategies in one comprehensive approach. So students entering ASAP must commit to full-time attendance. To make that possible, they each receive full financial aid. Since we found that transportation costs were a barrier, we provided free metro cards for the busways and subways in New York. Course choices are strictly limited, the opposite of the way many of us have operated for years. We felt students needed a clear roadmap and guidance, at least initially. To create a sense of community with peer support, students enter and advance in cohorts organized by major. Students are required to see advisors twice a month and career specialists at least once a semester. The advisors are informed early when there are warning signs regarding academic performance or other issues. This requires many more advisors and that represents a significant but essential investment. Under ASAP, advisors see about a third as many students as do typical CUNY community college advisors. The results have been immediate and striking. ASAP's average three-year graduation rate has been about 52% overall, compared with a similar group of CUNY students with a 22% rate and a 17% graduation rate at CUNY overall. MDRC, a highly regarded research organization, conducted a five-year random assignment study and concluded that ASAP's effects are, quote, unparalleled in large-scale experimental evaluations of programs in higher education, close quote. In announcing its initiative for free community college, the White House also encouraged schools to adopt promising evidence-based reforms, mentioning CUNY's ASAP. As you know, these strategies are not inexpensive. Initially, we were spending more than $6,000 more per student in ASAP. As we've grown the program, that has declined now to about $3,700, and we expect it to continue 
go down. We've benefited enormously from a major investment from the City of New York, as well as New York State, both of which have been supporters of this project. The budget for ASAP is growing from 26 million in this fiscal year to over 80 million in 2019. But as the cost per student goes up, with significantly higher graduation rates, the cost per degree goes down. I'm going to say that again. Even with a much higher investment in our community college programs, the new cost per degree at CUNY costs less. And the end investment yields an impressive return in other ways. The Teachers College at Columbia estimated that every dollar invested in ASAP generated at least three and a half dollars per associate degree to taxpayers in the form of increased revenues and social service savings. And from the standpoint of our students, every dollar invested in their education yields an additional $12.20 in increased future earnings. So given these results, we're doing all we can to broaden ASAP. Enrollment will rise from about 4,000 students last year to 13,000 by 2017 and 25,000 by 2018. And perhaps most significantly, as part of our expansion, CUNY's Bronx Community College will become the first campus where every full-time incoming freshman will enter ASAP, every student. At Bronx Community College, with some of So the applause started over there where the Bronx Community College president was sitting, so... At Bronx Community College, with some of CUNY's lowest graduation rates, we will demonstrate that ASAP's exceptionally promising results can be shared widely. This represents probably the most important step in this rollout, to show that we can obtain the same impressive results as we scale what has been a very successful pilot. In addition, we're also now expanding ASAP strategies to baccalaureate programs. With funding from the Robin Hood Foundation, we're starting ASAP with an initial group of 250 students at one of our four-year colleges, John Jay College of Criminal Justice, this fall. And with MDRC, we're working with the state of Ohio, which is adopting ASAP at three of its community colleges now. We're hopeful that other states will work with us, developing on a shared goal that will have a profound impact on the country's future and the opportunities for our students. So the key to CUNY's initiative, which is made up of a series of important elements which you all recognize, may seem simple. The key is what the students do with these tools. That's the secret ingredient in the formula. By helping see themselves in such a positive light, by enjoying success throughout their experience, these programs give young people tangible reasons for believing in themselves and their capabilities, and there's no greater motivation than that. As I was preparing for this event, I asked my community college presidents for their thoughts about what I should talk with you about. One told me that you should urge this influential group to use their political clout and their community leadership to advocate for higher funding for community colleges. Sound familiar? With declining state investments in higher education, I agree that's a very important goal and I hope we will do that. But my message today is a little different. It's a little narrower. It's to urge us all to sharpen our focus on programs that we can demonstrate are well worth the cost. It's become almost reflexive for politicians to say that we can't improve schools by throwing money at them. What we're learning in the real life laboratory at CUNY and many of your institutions is that by investing in well-designed programs that deliver what educators, political leaders, students, and families want, the payoff to our students and our country can be tremendous. So let's take advantage of what we know works, smart, targeted investments with measurable impact. These investments will help us address stubborn remedial challenges, dramatically increase retention and graduation, provide opportunity to those who have thus far not participated fully in our country's prosperity, and if we're persistent, 
help America along a path to rising again to meet President Obama's goal of being number one in the world in educational attainment. That's the case that you and I should be making to political leaders, and I believe it's one that's impossible to argue with. I thank you for the hard work you do every day, for the students in this country, for our communities, building strong community college that deliver on the promise of this country and provide the educational and economic opportunity to so many. Thank you. Thank you for all you do.